Hello friends, if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are a fan or a subscriber, welcome back and thank you for the patronage. I did not say this in part one or part two, but this is not for children. This is Jehovah's Witnesses Child Abuse Cover-Up Part 3. Let's go! Every time the elders do not report allegations or evidence of abuse, they neglect their moral responsibility. They have broken the law in places such as Australia and continue to put children in danger. Watchtower does not work with secular authorities to fix the problem. To the contrary, they work against them to the furthest extent possible. Now, I have heard that it is the culture of the Jehovah's Witnesses that even though the elders say the family can report the abuse, that the family stay silent because that is the culture of Jehovah's Witnesses. Watchtower lawyers have repeatedly tried to appeal to the clergy penitent privilege despite the fact that they have denied having a clergy and that this specifically addresses the Catholic confession. In addition, when a Catholic confesses to a priest, it stays between the person and the priest. However, in Watchtower, no such privacy is afforded. In fact, the elders are instructed to call the legal department. The general public should be most concerned with Watchtower expectations that pedophiles go out in the preaching work. Watchtower considers door-to-door -door preaching as necessary for salvation, and this means that any male JW at your door could be a pedophile. This is gross neglect on the part of Watchtower. Despite Watchtower knowing that pedophiles are likely to reoffend, the organization still encourages these people to participate in the door-to-door -door ministry. Watchtower's PR man said to the Louisville Courier Journal that sex offenders are only to preach when accompanied by a responsible adult. JWs, you should think about these two questions. How is said adult supposed to know that he is paired with a sex offender, and why does Watchtower expect said adult to babysit the sex offender? In 1997, Watchtower printed that those scripturally convicted of child molestation are not to be given positions of authority giving the misleading impression that those in authority can be trusted to have no prior convictions. Why is this misleading? Even if the person has been convicted by a court of law, the elders must find him guilty under scriptural principles, i.e., the two witness rule. If this is not met, a convicted pedophile may still be appointed to a position of authority. Watchtower also gives the impression, followers and the public, that those in authority can never be a known child abuser but internal correspondence shows otherwise. In a letter to elders, the Australian branch wrote on July 20th, 1998. 
Quote, so legal considerations must also be weighed along with the degree of notoriety, the extent of the misconduct, how many years ago the sin occurred, and how the brother is now viewed by the congregation and people in the community, including those he victimized, end quote. No, Watchtower, it is never appropriate to appoint a known child abuser to a position of authority, no matter how many years has passed since his crime, no matter how much he is admired by the congregation and the community. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, Hit the like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description, along with the source I used for this episode. If you wish to support this channel, you may do so on my PayPal link. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a couple of videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until later, friends. Goodbye.